Hey everyone, welcome back to Pop Out Workshop. Today on the CNC machine, I'm going to take just a scrap piece of wood like this, and it doesn't have to be very big, and I'm going to turn that into a very nice gift box that you can put the pins that you turn and give away as a gift. The nice thing about it is you can put a personal message on this side, or if you open up the box, you can have your beautiful pen inside of it, and you can put a personal message inside the lid. Your choice. Now, I think you'd have to agree. This is a beautiful way to be able to display the gift in its own personal gift box that you made on the CNC machine. I disconnected the dust collection so that you could get a better, clearer picture of what's actually taking place in the making of this gift box. I also used the glue and the tape method to be able to secure this project to the waste board. That means no tabs. No tabs mean it's going to be a little bit easier to do the cleanup. The bit that I'm using is a quarter inch spiral upcut bit. Before I get just tons of emails and uh, comments on why did I use an upcut bit, quite frankly, it was the only bit that I had. There was two issues. One, this is an upcut bit, and two, this, quite frankly, is a very dull bit. But again, it's the only one that I had. I organized the files by actually labeling them 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. More on that in a few minutes as I show you in detail exactly how I designed this gift box. And the best part, once you understand the concepts of how to design this gift box, you can design any shape, whether it's a triangle, a square, an oval, a star. It does not matter. You can use the exact same techniques and design any shape box that you wish. Another consideration is the type of wood that you're using. Now this is just a test piece that I'm using and it's premium pine. I would suggest using oak, walnut, or another hardwood to be able to make these gift boxes. If you look up close, I'm sure you're going to notice that there's a little bit of tear out on this material. And that's for really two reasons. One, it's very soft wood, and two, more importantly, Again, this is a very dull bit. After I made this video, I went right out to the big box store and bought two brand new quarter inch uh, spiral bits to be able to replace this one. To cut out the slot for the pin to fit in, I used a box core bit. To be able to get that, I went over to the router table and just used the router bit. It's a box core bit and it fits in here perfectly. This is a half inch uh, box core bit and you notice that I just put that into my spindle and it's going to do just fine cutting out this slot. People often ask if you can use regular router bits in the CNC machine. Well, the short answer is yes, you most certainly can. And this is a perfect example where I just pulled out a box core bit from my router table, put it in the CNC, and by the way, yes, in VCAR Pro, I did take and measure the parameters of this bit and entered it in the tool selection area. And that means anytime I need a box core bit, I can just go into the VCAR under the tool selection and be able to select this bit and all the parameters will be there and I'll be able to use this over and over again. Now this next part, I wanna take this box itself and show you exactly how I made it. Now there's two parts of it, obviously. We have this bottom portion that actually has the trough in here for the pin itself. And then we have the lid that's gonna fit on top of it. So we're gonna start from the center and work out. We're gonna start with the size of that pin. And I wanna be able to have this set up. We're gonna set the anchor point at the center. And I'm just gonna make this at uh, three inches and three inches. We're going to move it in a moment. I do want this to have a radius on it and we're going to make this radius at um, 0.25 of an inch and the width of this is going to be six inches long, 6.625 inches on the um, y-axis. So I'll create that. We'll close it and I'll bring this right up into this area. We'll just have it snap there in the center 
and that'll be the starting point. Now this next one is really any size that you want. But what I chose to do is go with a box that was seven inches wide or seven inches long and inch and a half wide on the Y axis. And we'll create that. And we're gonna close this out for a moment. And I left this radius the same. And we can bring that up and we can snap that right in place because I do have the snaps on. Now, is this wide enough for two pins? No, it's not. If I needed to put two pins, a pen and a pencil set, I would have to make this wider. But we'll stay with this right now. So at this point, I want to be able to extend this outward. And the best way to do that is with the offset tool. I want to extend it outward. I want to go out 0.25 of an inch. And we'll keep the original shape here. So we'll do that as the offset. So that is taken care of. Now what that does, it creates this line because we already have the trough, we have the inner wall, now we have the outer wall. We need to extend this out one more time. So I'm gonna select this line and we're going to offset it out a quarter of an inch. And that takes care of this portion right here. And literally that is the bottom of the box. Completely done. Only thing we'll need to do is set up the uh, tool pass. But what I want to do now is be able to create the lid. And to create the lid, all I need are these two right here. This outermost line and this inner line that creates this wall. And to do that, I'm going to hit Control C and Control V, and then I will move those down to this portion right here. So that takes care of the lid, but there's one more thing that we need to do. We need to make an offset to build up, make this inside wall just a little bit wider. And the reason being, right now, if you tried to put this box together, it would be literally impossible to get together. And even this box is literally airtight because as I squish it together, the air wants to push it back out. So I would actually want to make the tolerances a little bit more. So we're going to do that in this video. Now at this point, this box is completely finished. We've got everything that we need. So I'm going to start now and create the tool paths. First tool path I'm going to create is on the lid itself, and it's going to be this one right here. So let's switch over and go to the tool paths. Now I'm going to make this as a pocket tool path, and I'm going to be starting at the surface, and we're going to carve down 3 eighths of an inch, 0.375. And as far as the bit that I want to be able to do, we're going to get rid of this bit, we're removing that one, and I'm going to be using the quarter inch end mill. And we'll select that. And I'm going to just keep it at the five passes. We could edit it and bring it down uh, with the machine that I have probably to three passes or four passes easy, but I'm just going to leave it at the five. Now I want to be able to have an offset allowance for the pocket. I want this to be able to be a little bit bigger. And when I created, when I created this box, I allowed five thousandths of an inch. And that's a little bit too tight because it literally still made an airtight seal. It held on well once you got the air out of it, but I want to be able to allow six thousandths, so 0 0.006. And we're going to see how that works on the next uh, box that I cut out. And at this point, we need to rename it. Now, one of the things that I like to do, this is going to be the first tool path that I cut. So I'm going to identify this as number one. And then I'm going to have the lid 
uh, cut out. And this is a quarter inch end mill. So now I have all the information there. So we'll hit calculate. We'll reset this and we'll review the tool path. There's only one right now. And that is going to give me that cutout exactly the way we want with six thousandths of an inch tolerance going on the outside. And we can take a look at that. So this is the tool path that we just created. Number one, the lid cutout with our quarter inch end mill. And this shows you the path and it's gonna cut this down just like this and create this pocket. Now we allowed six thousandths of an inch. So if I turn this on up here, you can see the actual tool path. Change this, cause it's cut on the inside and that's not what we want. So let me go back now. We'll edit this. And instead of having a positive number, we need to have a negative number here. So that's going to be a minus 0 0.006. And basically, whenever we want that tool path to cross our line, we need to have a negative number here. So let me recalculate that. We'll reset the preview. We'll preview the tool path. And now that's going to be the correct tool path, showing that pocket again. And if we turn this on up here so we can see the tool pass. Now you can see when I zoom in, it's over cutting. And when it over cuts off of the original tool path, that's going to give us that space that we need to be able to put the lid on and off easily. So that's a way to be able to check it to make sure that you have it correct. So now that this pocket is done, we need to be able to cut this out. So we're going to take this one right here next, and we're going to come back up to our tool path and select a profile. Again, we're going to start at the zero cut depth. We're going to cut all the way down through the material at 0.75 of an inch, and we're going to change the bit to a quarter of an inch end mill. We'll select that, and we certainly don't need 10 passes. I'm going to reduce it down to four passes. And then I don't use the tab because I use the glue and the tape method. So at this point, that's all we need to be able to do. I'm going to name this though, number two. And that is going to be the lid cut out. Again, that's a quarter inch end mill. And of course, I don't need to have the profile in there again. So there we go. We'll calculate that. And there you have this tool path. And that will cut out the lid. So let's reset this, preview all of the tool paths, and that will give you this lid just as you see it here. That is perfect. That's exactly what we want. So we're going to go back to the 2D view, and now we're going to click off of that, and we're going to start working on this one. Now, the first thing I want to do is create this pocket right here. So this tool path is the one that we need to highlight. So this right here, we'll click on this one, and we're going to create a pocket. We're going to cut down our 3 eighths of an inch down to create this pocket. We're using a quarter inch end mill. And this will be number three. And this is the base. Quarter inch end mill. I always put that on there so I know exactly what I calculated and used. And then we'll reset this, preview all the tool paths, and now you can see where that pocket's been done. Now then, while we're here, I'm going to go ahead and use my box core bit 2D view. We'll uncheck that and we will check this one. Now, we're going to use the pocket tool path. We're going to have to start now at this depth, 
we've already cut down three eighths of an inch. That's 0.375. So we need to start at 375. And then I'm going to carve down an additional eighth of an inch. That's 0.125. I could go a little bit deeper because I still have plenty of material, but I think that's going to work just fine. Now at this point, we'll remove this bit and we will select a new bit. And I'm going to select my box core bit. Here's my box core bit right here. And then I will select that. So that's in there. We have our heights correct. Passes, we can reduce this down. We're only going to go down an eighth of an inch. I'll do this in three passes to take it nice and slow. And then we'll label this as number four. And this is going to be my box core bit. And we'll calculate it. So we'll reset everything so we can see it, review all of our tool paths, and now you can see how that looks inside of there. All right, we'll close out of that. Now the next thing, we need to move to the outside. So we'll go back to our 2D view, and we'll need to move to the outside. So we're going to cut this one right here. And this one, we're going to, this is going to cut down on this wall, down to this portion, and we can cut down this, the three eighths of an inch again. So this is going to be starting at the surface, cutting down the three eighths of an inch or 0.375. We're going to use the same quarter inch end mill and that's really it. We're going to have this as number five and this is our ledge. So that's going to create this ledge right there. Let's calculate it. We'll do the same thing so we can see the progression. And now at this point, you can see that ledge in there exactly how we wanted it. So that's taken care of. The only thing that's left now is to cut it out. Back to the 2D view. We'll switch over to this one. We'll close this out. Go back up here to our profile tool path. And this time we're cutting all the way through the material, 0.75 of an inch. We're going to do this in far less than 10 passes. We definitely don't need to do that. We'll do it in, let's just say five passes. And then we'll come down and we will identify this as number six. Number six, and this will be the cutout for the base. Quarter inch end mill. And we'll calculate it. And then we will review everything, review all tool paths. And there we have the completed box. And you can see how that looks exactly the same. And if we want to compare the lid, we have the lid right here. And that completes our box. Now, when you save the tool paths and you bring those up into the computer to be able to cut out, you know exactly which one to cut first, and it will step you all the way through the progression. Now, this was a lot of fun to make this video today. Now, I'm going to keep this, and I'm going to go ahead and stain and finish this box. And then, when I'm ready to give away my next pen... I'm going to be able to put in a personalized text. Now I can either use the laser or I can use the V-card bit and put in that personalized message right here on this gift box. And what's even more interesting, if I take this lid off, I have additional space inside of here. 
again to add a personal message. Your choice is up to you. The options, quite frankly, are almost limitless as to what you can do with these types of gift boxes. And if you went and priced these at the store and priced them online, you're going to find out that these boxes start around $14, $15 a piece. And you can tell this one didn't cost really anything but a little scrap piece of wood. Well, with the information that I provided to you today in this video, you can make your gift box just as easy and duplicate this. Now, it doesn't have to be rectangle. This information gives you all the basics that you need to create any shape, whether it's a circle, a triangle, a star shape. You can create any shape that you want. So I hope you found this information useful today. And if you did, by all means, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget, hit the subscribe button, bell notification, so that you'll be notified on the different videos. And I look forward to seeing each and every one of you in the next video. And I really do appreciate each and every one of you stopping by and watching these videos. And I especially want to thank the Patreon members who support this channel. So for now, I'll see you in the next video on whatever project that I'm doing. Okay, bye-bye now.